I love project bikes. Some people would say I love them a little bit too much. And uh, my workshop here, I've had a few different ones in. The one that I'm working on at the moment is this Cafe Racer project. I was actually looking for some electrical parts for another CB750 that I had. And I came across this as a project bike that uh, had all the bits I wanted, plus a lot that I hadn't even thought of. Now, if you've been following this series, you'll know that this engine came with a few surprises. I actually thought it was going to be uh, quite good at first. It had been rebuilt, but the person who'd rebuilt it had made a couple of mistakes that caused problems. If you look at the back catalogue, you'll see I've had uh, the barrels reboard and I've got the head on now. I'm moving on now to getting the camshaft sorted and the cam carriers and getting them on. I bought the head and I bought that cam and all of the bits with it from the same breakers, although they do break quite a few different bikes. So yeah, I'm hoping they're from the same one. They might not be, but we'll see. I've had a, a brief look and I think that they look okay. So today, what I'm gonna do is get all the parts out the box, give them a clean, have a look, and then decide how I'm fitting them to this engine. Should be fun. I have had a look before and it doesn't look too bad this. Things I have been looking at. The cam. A couple of the lobes were stained. Now they've cleaned off. They have got some light scoring but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world for what I'm doing. It's actually not in bad nick at all really so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. The cam carriers, interestingly, They've got Casey, CL, NF, and EN. Now I'm not quite sure what those letters are supposed to mean. However, they'll match up to the NF. It's okay, they're always on the other side. EN, KC, and CL. So those will match the right seats. Looking at the seats, there's less scoring on these than on the ones that I took off the uh, the F-Series engine that I was stripping down. Although I would have happily used the ones off the F-Series as well, so that looks good. I'm going to check and make sure that these look like they're the right rockers in the right place. I suspect they are. It looks like when someone took it apart, they have had a bit of care to put things back where they were. I really like to try and put rockers back exactly where they were when I strip an engine. Um, and if they've all come loose in a bag, then obviously you can't do that. I don't think there's any marking on them. Overall though, I'm quite pleased. I need to now work out whether these will fit my engine, which I'm sure they will, how it's going to go in, give it all a good clean, get it ready and get it on. Oh, the joy of mechanic in. Working out where the actual cam carriers fit has made it a little bit easier in that the shafts that hold the uh, rocker arms on have slots in one end. So can only certainly really have them to the outside or only sensibly so I suspect that that's right on this side and with my theories might be off the same engine one of the dowels that's on this one matches up now if there was a dowel on the other side I'd say that was probably going to be a dead cert there isn't so you can't be sure but that fits on there okay and it seems to be EN, NF, KC, and CL. And I'm really no idea why they're lettered like that. You know, you might have had it numbered as uh, 
number four, number three, number two, number one. <laughs> Make more sense. There must be a reason. If you can think of a reason, put it in the comments. I'm fascinated as to why it's got those letters on. And you never know, it might be a factory thing. I haven't noticed it before though. In looking at the cam carriers further and the rocker arms, I can see that these ones are marked A, these ones are marked B, these ones are marked A, and these ones are marked B. There's also numbers on different ones, that like 61 and 92 and such like, and 91, which I'm not quite sure, I think might just be casting numbers. As you can see, there's a, a slight angle to them. So, from what I can see, I'm reasonably confident that these are in the right place with regard to where they were originally because someone's gone to an effort to put them back and all the evidence I can see tells me that. I'll check that in the parts book just before I do put it together but what I'm going to do now is whip them off here, give them a really good clean, lay it out, check what seals that I may need. I know there's pucks, three pucks under each of these that'll need sealing. There's also some uh, O-rings for the oil that comes up in here and shoots out of these little holes to oil the, uh, the carb as it's rotating. So there's O-rings as well, but I'll check all the others. So get them off, get them clean now, strip off the rocker arms. The dowel was doing a bit of a dowel thing. It all came apart easy enough. I'll have a quick look just to make sure that there's nothing broken and nothing looks too untoward. I won't clean them just yet until I've got all the seals sorted out, ready to go onto the bike. Otherwise I'll end up cleaning them twice. So, quick look, sort out the seals, clean, get it on. Things I've been looking for is any major scratches or things on the seats of the rocker arms. They've been used before, so they're gonna have some marks. Check out the balls as well, so see that they're okay. Check that the shafts haven't got anything untoward on. I think that's just a mark there. Um, give them a clean. And then the seats, the actual bearings where the camshaft sits, Make sure that they aren't looking too bad. And although they're marked, they don't look too bad at all then. Give them a, a clean, you know, just make sure that it's all, you know, good to go. And then don't forget these little oil ways. What I'll do is I'll blow it through with air to make sure that there's nothing blocking them up. I check the seats on the caps for the cam. And the camshaft itself. I've already had a look at that and I think that looks you know, good to go, but do it no harm to have another look. Thank you. 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Honda Bond to put round here, round here for where the pucks go. I'm also going to put it round the outside of where the oil jet o-rings go and where the blanks are as well. And I'm going to put a little bit in the holes where the bolts that hold the cam carriers go through. Um, it does say to use a uh, Loctite as well in these. I think using some of the sealant is probably sufficient and talking them down to the right thing. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to put the cam carriers on, screw the cam carriers on, torque them down. Then I'm going to use assembly lube. This has got extra things in it so that your initial start up and the first few miles, the actual bearings get a little bit more uh, lubricant. And I'm going to use that in the cam carriers and on the cams and the cam lobes as well. Now this Honda Bond is very, very sticky, horrible stuff. It actually smells like paint. I don't want to put too much on, but I do want to put enough on. So I'm using a, a paintbrush. I'll probably end up putting more on than I expect. I'm going to put some in the uh, bolt holes. I find with sealant frequently it's a less is more. You want it to do its job but not overdo it. Now, the bit I'm worried a bit about. Got to make sure whatever I do, do not block these oil jet holes. Puck. Puck. in place. And that one's for the blind hole. That's for the oil jet. Oil jet. Blind hole. At least when you're videoing it. You can look back at the video and convince yourself, yes, I have put them in. So, looking good. I checked which way round these went, and CL is to the outside, and it can only go on there. Check in my uh, little oil jet hole is free. So that's that one on there. And EN goes to the outside, so it can only go on there. Now this one's a little bit stiffer to put on. So what I'm going to do before I talk them on, I'm just giving them a little bit of a tapping. Make sure they're seated down. Pretty pleased with that. Two bolts that hold these on. Seems a little bit flimsy to be honest.
Now, these torque down to 12 Newton meters overall. And I'm doing them to nine, first of all. And it's always worrying when you're screwing something into aluminium. But the threads in these holes do look quite good. Right, so I'm going to do them to 9 Newton meters first. I'm using my smallest scale torque wrench. That's nine. Next I'm gonna put assembly lube on the bearing surfaces of the cam carriers. Made sure these were all clean. And now the cam can go in. Remove this now because obviously it's done its job. This is set to top dead center one and four, and the cam needs setting so that those lines are horizontal and that notches upwards. So the cam's actually in the right position now. Put assembly lube on the top. And then the caps, I want EN to go there. And I'll put the letters to the outside. And any. That might be an F. Okay, I'm gonna put that to the outside. And then, whichever one's not CL. KC. And CL. Now they are machined quite tight, but you can see there is a, a bit of a slope on that one. Just uh, there we go. So pretty much can tell that they're on the right particular ones because of where the slope is to the outside. Pleased with that. Now this explains my other four bolts that I wasn't sure where they went. Before I put the bolts in the cam sprocket. What I'm going to do is just make sure that I've still got it on top dead centre and that these lines match up with the, uh, the join line here with the cam carrier cap and that that faces to the top. With that marked like that, that at top dead centre for one and four, it definitely means the cam's in the right position. So I'll get these holes lined up, I'll give them a good clean out and I'm going to use some red Loctite just to make sure they're not coming out. Thank you. 
Now just turn it over so that I can get to the other bolt. There we go. And that's the second one in. What I'll do now is I'll move it round to make sure that the timing marks and the top dead centre for one and four match up again. Then I'll put the rockers on. Typically I hadn't spotted that that actually has to run through there and I wanted them clamped down because of the sealant on here but now I've got these in as well I can just whip these off so that I can put it in all the way. Then I hit the next problem that this cam is actually pushing the rocker up. So I need to turn the engine over a little bit so that I can push it all the way through. He says. Now the other thing is the thread on these is more to one side than the other. So you have to make sure you've got the threaded side up, I think. That's that in. So what I can do now is replace this and I'll torque that down to 10. And I've got these two to go in here. Just wind the engine around a little bit now so that the other cams add lobes to the bottom. Make life a bit easier for myself. That's them all in and talked. And what I'm gonna do is just make sure there's plenty of initial lubrication using assembly lube. Probably overdoing it, but it'll do it no harm whatsoever. That's all the rockers in. Camshaft in, head on. I think ready to go. Now, before I do the valve clearances, I need to put the uh, cam chain tensioner in. I'm not going to do that right away because I want to give everything a really good clean. So I'm going to do that at some point in the future. I need to decide now what I'm doing with the actual cover, whether I'm polishing it again or what I'm doing. Might just be going to put it back on and get it running first. And so I need to think about that. And the cover's down here. So before I put the cam chain tensioner on, I'm going to do that first. Give it a dose of thinking about. It was a fiddlier job than I expected. And it was 
bloody annoying when you've got to take bolts back out and put them in. I'm sure the workshop manual told me that I should do it the right way. But you read that, you get on with the job and it doesn't always quite work out. But be sensible, you know, in how you're doing it. Talking these down into the head really is, to me, scary because I know these threads are ones that commonly need redoing on these heads. I've been lucky. I've done them to 10 newton meters, these ones. And that's about midway of the range. And I'm quite happy about that. So I'm going to stop there because I think I've reached a really good point with this. Um, I'll pick it up next time. Hopefully we'll be uh, nearly at the point of getting this into the uh, into the bike. Uh, that would be absolutely great. Why don't you follow along and see what we do next. I'll look at some of our other videos as well. It'd be great if you subscribed. That really helps the channel. But thank you very much for watching. <laughs>